So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, so I represent Cambridge Quantum Computing. So how many of you have heard of quantum computing before? Good, okay, how many of you know what it is? Good, okay, so I'm gonna begin with a very brief physics lesson. Good, so, uh, so as you know, of course, computers work on binary digits or bits, and these are just ones and zeros, and everything in computers is based on this idea. Quantum computing isn't just a faster type of computer, it's a completely different type of computer based on quantum physics, and what it means is that you're replacing these bits with quantum bits, or qubits. And what happens mathematically is that you're, you're taking this one and zero, and you're enlarging it into the surface of a sphere. So it's like the one is at the north pole and the zero is at the south pole, but it can occupy any value in between. And so this is the crucial feature, is that a quantum computer can let you evaluate several possibilities at once. So in terms of financial analysis, there's a lot of advantages to this, because quantum machine learning sort of brings the best of both worlds to this. So these are just a few of the examples. So one example is option pricing. Uh, a lot of these are very path dependent, so it has to make a lot of choices very quickly. Another thing is clustering. When you have to categorize or sort different things, like buy or sell, quantum machine learning could help you out a lot. And then finally, just doing scenario analysis, like analyzing the risk of things, oftentimes the risk is very dependent on the risk of other things, and there's a, there's a lot of recursion there. And so quantum machine learning can help you with all of these things. Unfortunately, I, I don't have time to go into all of these. Since this is a blockchain focus, I'd like to focus on this one particular aspect. Whenever I tell people that I'm in quantum computing, the one question I get asked more often than any other is, so with quantum computers, can you just get all the bitcoins? The answer is no, but there is still a danger. And you can divide this into two separate facts. So the first is, could you just mine them all really quickly? And the answer is no. The reason is because quantum computers are only good for a few things. The rest of the, the things they're very bad at, actually. And mining bitcoins is not one of those things. There are already specialized, specialized processors called GPUs, which are very fast at this, and people already use these. And so you can't just take a quantum computer and mine all the bitcoins and be done with it. What is happening, though, is that whenever you make this blockchain, you have these signatures to kind of prove that this is authentic. And these signatures are done using normal standard computer encryption called RSA. Uh, this is the same encryption that is used to make sure that your credit cards are transacted safely on a computer. These can be broken for the following reason. All of online encryption uses this funny property of mathematics that multiplication is easy, but factoring is very hard. So I've written two numbers here on the left side of the screen. I bet every one of you could take those two numbers and just with a pencil and paper, after a few minutes, you could reproduce the product on the right side. Assuming you don't make any arithmetic mistakes, you will absolutely get the right answer. And if I doubled the size of those numbers, it would take you about twice as long, but you would still know exactly how to do it and you would be guaranteed to get the right answer. But if I gave you the number on the right side, I bet you would find it very difficult to go the other way. It's very difficult to find the prime factors that make up this number. And you shouldn't feel bad about the fact that you find it difficult to do. No one has ever found a quick way to do this. No one in history has found an efficient way to factor a number into the constituent primes. So this does happen to be one of the things that quantum computers are good at. In fact, this was one of the very first applications that, uh, that was written down for a quantum computer. Even before we had actually built the computers themselves, we found a mathematical way of doing this. And to show you how much quicker it is, I have here a chart showing this is how long it takes on a classical computer. So if you, you notice how you, if you double the size of this number that you're trying to factor, you get a disproportionately large amount of time to factor it. If you go from 256 bits to 512, it goes from one hour to over four days. And then it very quickly escalates into, into thousands of years. On a quantum computer, it still takes longer to, to factor a larger number, but it's much more reasonable. It actually only goes as the cube if you double it. So, uh, so this is something that could be very efficiently broken. So when you see headlines like quantum computers can break all of our codes, there is some truth to that. 
uh, it won't happen today. Uh, I estimate it's about five years away at most. It won't happen today, but it will happen at some point. Okay, so that's the bad news. So you should be a little bit scared about this. But the good news is there's a way of, of adding encryption which is quantum proof, and it actually uses quantum physics to make it secure. And this is called quantum key distribution, or just quantum encryption a little more generally. And so, uh, so it's much more sophisticated. It actually uses quantum states, and it's completely hack-proof. Normally, with normal encryption, if someone is eavesdropping, you don't know this until it's too late. You don't know that someone knows your password until they've already used it for some bad purpose. But with quantum key distribution and quantum encryption, you actually know immediately if someone is eavesdropping. And so it's guaranteed to be secure. It's not just a better security method. It's guaranteed by the laws of physics to be secure. So eventually, all of online security will have to be redone. All the web browsers and blockchain and money transaction, there will have to be something like a quantum PayPal invented. So where do we stand right now? So quantum computers really do exist. It's not just science fiction, they really do exist. Uh, I've listed here the top four players, and this has actually escalated incredibly quickly. Just last July, uh, Google was in the lead at nine qubits. So a, a qubit, as I mentioned, is the degree of power of a quantum computer. Then in October, Intel jumped to 17. Then in November, uh, IBM announced a 50 qubit machine, and just last month, Google announced a 72 bit qubit machine. So that's how quickly this is escalating, and so it really is happening right now. Uh, so the company I work for, Cambridge Quantum Computing, we specialize in exactly this type of quantum encryption and quantum security. So if you would like to discuss this in terms of blockchain or any type of financial asset, uh, please find me later, and I'd be glad to talk with you. Thank you.